Okay. So no problem. .NET Basics first. Okay. Now what happens is uh, if you see normal compilation of language, any language. Okay. When you are compiling uh, any language, what, hap what what is the process of compilation? Compilation means that basically you have written some kind of code and the code has to be changed to a machine language or else the machine will not understand it. Okay. That's correct. So compilation means you know basically compiling your code into a binary format so that it can be executed. Okay. So in all the languages, right, it is always compiled to a binary format, straightforward. Okay. In other words, if you write a C++ code, right, and if you just say compile, it will just get into a full compilation or it will get fully compiled into machine code. Okay. Right, right. Now the problem with this C++ compilation approach is that uh, you know let's say that you compile you here hit this compile on a on a what you call a x86 machine let's say okay right or must be on a 64 bit machine so what what happens is you know the exe what is produced or the compilation what has been done is as per that machine uh, what you call configuration okay machine now, yes machine dependent in other words if i take this exe let's say if i compile an x64 and if i try to go and run on a 32 bit machine it's possible that it will run slow Okay, or it will not run optimally, or many of the times it will not run at all. Must be, you know, that's a, that's a extreme case. I'm just saying. Uh, because of this, what happens is, you know, like, uh, it, uh, you know, your, your exe will not perform optimally, or it will not perform at all, or not execute at all. Okay. So what they have done in in this modern languages like Java and C Sharp, you know, they have said that we will not compile to full machine language. In other words, when you write in C Sharp anything, right, and if you say hit compile. It doesn't compile to full lang uh, compile to a full machine code. It, it gets compiled to something called as IL code, intermediate language code. Okay, right. And then when you go and run that IL code, what what it will do is it will then start compiling line by line depending on the need or execution of the project to to machine language. Okay. Right. And while it is compiling on the fly, it also starts using the machine configuration. It says, oh, this is a a, a 64 bit machine, so I should do this. This has only this much RAM. I should do this. Okay, so in other words, depending on the scenario, he will then generate an optimal compile code uh, for that machine. Okay, in other words, as compared to other languages, C Sharp is you know uh, what you call a, a, it, it has an intermediate language. In other words, it doesn't compile fully. It is part. It has a partial compiled code, and that partial compiled code actually gets fully compiled. Uh, you know when, when the actually the application starts running. Okay. Okay. So any questions here? No, that's fine. Now, now this compilation, right? This on the file compilation. In other words, from IL code to machine code happens through a process called, uh, you know, by a system called a JIT, just in time compiler. Yeah, JIT. Okay. okay. In other words, he is the person who actually, when you hit that IL code, he actually goes and starts uh, compiling those lines. So this is the person who is responsible for compiling the programming languages. Now, if okay. you want to see the IL code, right? The best way is go and run IL DSM. Right. Go to your start all program files. And you can see that there is Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. You will be using 2010 or uh, something else? How is it? Yeah, at this point I am using 2010. Okay. So, right. So go to this command prompt here. Okay. Okay. And type here ILDSM. Okay. <coughs> now, whatever exe you have compiled, you know, just go and now this ILDSM, as the name says, that it's it's a dis, you know, uh, it will it will deassemble the the IL code. Okay. That's so go and say okay. file open and open your exe whichever you want to see the IL code for. So for example, this console application which I've compiled in .NET, I've opened it. Okay. Now if you go and if you go to the static void main, you can see this is the IL code. Okay. So in other words, IL code is a half compiled code or partially compiled code, and that code right. you get fully compiled. You know when the application starts running by using JIT just in time compiler. So what, what do you mean that when application started means when I double click on that uh, uh, executable something like that? Ah yes, when you double click on the exe. Okay, okay. So remember that uh, the big difference between C++ or any other, like example in C++ if I want to execute that exe, I just have to have, to have that exe. I don't need any framework, right? But if you want right. to run the .NET application, you need a framework and that framework actually kicks off and he has all the JIT and other things with him. Right, okay, okay, okay. Now, uh, so that is one part, you know. Uh, second is uh, <coughs> uh, there is a concept called as CTS, okay, common, common type, type system. Okay. So you heard about this CTS common type system? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard it. Yeah. So what, what exactly is it? You just, you know, just also get a feel. Yeah, that data type that will be common to all languages. Yeah, all languages means which languages? I'm going to say, uh, let's like, say, uh, C++, it should be C++, CLI, like. Uh, many C++ 
or bb.net so or the, if if sharp yeah but what is the importance of this common type system i mean so what will happen if uh, if you have a common type system <clears throat> okay let me tell you so, suppose uh, if i try to use like uh, uh, what like uh, like integer variable okay or short variable okay so maybe maybe this variable is might not be compatible in other language okay absolutely suppose if i try to use struct lang struct right c++ struct in directly vb or c sharp it might not uh, understand that okay yes. that type okay so yes. that's the most important that we need to use some common type like uh, we are using is com okay we, we are using interpreted language which is definitely different as generic type right these are the same thing like no oh, absolutely you are right so in other words now what happens is when you let's say you make a component in c sharp and you want to use in vb.net right so right. it's you know if you want to call those components or if you want to increase usability across platforms right then definitely there should be a common type system or else this integer here you know probably cannot it cannot be mapped directly to an integer of of a c, c sharp in other words a integer a dim i as integer in vb.net can probably not map to int i in c sharp right so right, right. that's right so common type system the, the important thing here is basically it 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 boils down to a common data type you know and that common data type is known to all languages so it, so you can just call the other languages easily for example if you look at c++ right if i want to call a, a c++ code from visual basic if i look at that right it's very right. it's very difficult i used to always get some memory exception or something why because the data types were not compatible that that's correct now there is one more uh, thing called as the common language specification any idea on this uh, common language Specification? No, okay. Common language specification means some syntax or something like that. You are telling? See, syntaxes will be different, right? I mean to say, if I call, if I say, what you call a, a public static void main uh, in VB dot net will be public sub main, right? <clears throat> so the syntax okay. will be different. But uh, yeah, go ahead, Basu. Must be what I'll do, in Basu. This is good that if you talk and then if I talk and we can have a a, a proper class over here. So let me just explain you what a common language specification means. Let okay. me just show you a demo here of a common language specification. Okay. Let me open my Visual Studio here. Now, now if you see right, uh, until that Visual Studio pops up, we have a lot of languages. You know, C Sharp, VB dot net, uh, F Sharp, your CLI. Uh, I'm not aware of it, but C plus plus dot net. I'll say rather for now, just to make C++ it. C plus plus CLI. Yeah, yeah, C++ dot net. That's fine. I'll just C++ or like you know Foxpro dot net. There's a I also saw some other you know BJ plus plus and I don't know what those things were. Now all these languages have their own speciality. For example, C++ uses pointers, you no? Know, right. While C sharp cannot. Okay. Uh, and for example, now VB dot net is uh, uh, it, it is not uh, uh, case sensitive. Okay. While C sharp is case sensitive. Okay. So. Now let's take this common scenario. Let me just go to my Visual Studio and let me go and create a C# -sharp component. Okay. So okay. this I'll explain later on how to create class libraries and components. For now, just just try to see the demo what I'm doing. So let me okay. create a new project and let me create a very nice class library called as Add. Okay. Okay. And this Add class library I would like to later go and consume in VB.NET. Okay. Okay. So what I'll do is let me just define a new project. I don't know why it's so slow. And uh, let me create a class library here, okay. And uh, <clears throat> now what I'll do here is uh, I will create two add functions, okay. So okay. So, so here in C sharp, you know, until that pops. So what I'll do is I'll create uh, one add with a small add and one add with a big A, okay. okay. Now in C sharp, you know, both of these method names are different because it is case sensitive. Okay. Right. But if I try to consume this in VB dot net, you know what will happen then? Because VB dot net for him add is add. Okay. Okay. So if you see here now, let me just go to my classes. Why is it slow? No, that's fine. It's very clear. Yeah. Okay. So you want me to show the demo, but let me show you the demo. What happens so that we can understand? Uh, uh, I do know that. Just go and is the recording happening at the same? Let me just go and exit my firewall here. So now this is add, okay? Okay. And this is add, 
Okay. If I hit and if if I build this, it will compile. In other words, uh, because both of them are add and add. Okay. Right. Now I add a, a VB dot net client here. We will consume this component. Okay. Okay. So okay. now let's see what happens, and then I'll talk about common language specification. Okay. So add new project. And let me go and select Visual Basic. You can see I'm selecting Visual Basic here, and I'm going to select uh, a console application for Visual Basic. Okay. Okay. Now, because of the common type system, you can always uh, what you call consume VB dot net components in C sharp and and vice versa. Okay. So I'll just go and add the reference of this class library to. So let me just say add reference of this class library inside this VB dot net project. Okay. okay. And now I'll go and create the object of this class library. And when I do a dot, I should be able to see both the add functions. But there is a catch here. Wait, wait, wait. When you are adding add add reference, that means it is reference to directly that DLL or something like that, or lib file. Which one? No, this one is it will reference the DLL. There is no lib file here. There is a debug file here. Uh, there is a uh, what do you call? There is no live. There is no live file here. Lib lib file is not there. It's a DLL at this moment. Okay. Okay. And there are two things. When you are actually referencing, when you are coding, right? In other words, when you are inside a Visual Studio, right? When you are actually referencing, you actually debug into a code. So at this moment, just to answer your question, you actually reference the DLL. So reference the DLL because uh, do, we, do we need to do it that way, or is there any way we can do it programmatically? Programmatically, like, uh, no. Programmatically, I don't know how to do it, but uh, at this moment, yeah. As well, you are using using system something like that. So, is there any import or any statement that will actually add the reference when it will compile instead of doing that way? No, see, one is that you have to do a yeah one no directly the using is the next step, right? The first thing is you have to add a reference to that physical file, or else uh, how will the uh, how will your program come to know that there is a library there? And then uh, importing it in the in your program is a different thing. Then you will say import and start the work. Okay. No, add reference means something actually. But they are adding. Add. Something they are adding. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. When you say add reference means you know. Ah, yes, yes, definitely. That is there. The when you yeah, say add reference means you will actually uh, have the physical path where the DLL is. Yeah, that uh, is it not possible. We can mention from uh, it code itself. From code, no. From code, no. At least the add reference. See, at the end of the day, when you do add reference, right, you will see that it actually goes and modifies a file here. Let me just show that file. Okay, I'm going to talk about this in detail later on. Uh, okay, okay. If you see, right. Okay. If you, uh, I'll show you that later on. You know, because uh, uh, oh, let's see this. Let me just go to this project file actually. Let, let me just show that. If you see the structure of this project, right, there is a VB proj file here. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. And now, if you open this file in Notepad, at the end of the day, when you do add reference, it actually goes and makes an entry in this file. Okay. So okay. if you go and open this in Notepad, you see that you know there is a there is a line which is added saying that you know I am referencing uh, that file. So if I go and open this in Notepad, open Notepad here, because we we are inside inside Visual Studio IDE, right? We don't see these internal things. So if I go and put it. Over here, you can see somewhere he would have mentioned. <coughs> yeah, I mentioned uh, that there is a reference. Uh, include uh, console application. Somewhere he'll go and reference. Reference here saying that I am in need of this file because when we did add reference, he's actually modifying this file at the backend. What is that file name? Okay. Uh, Control F. Class library. Library two. Somewhere you will add a reference here. You can see that if you see here the project reference. Can you see this project and import? Yeah, yeah. So you are okay. Okay. That is. Yeah, so somebody will go and add this. For example, now this resource files is something he is referencing, so he has added upon. So he uses this dependent upon uh, thing and he adds the things over here. Okay. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay. <coughs> so uh, now that you don't have to do with your hand, why? Because the whole point here is, or else you know, you will lose the benefit of rapid development, right? Okay. 
So once you do this at reference right now, if I try to go and create the object of this class one here, okay, the new class one, okay, and if I do o dot, oh sorry, this is pp dot net. I'm sorry, dim o as new class one, okay. Uh, there is no semicolon there. Uh, o dot. <coughs> now you can see that I don't see that add method here. Very strange. Okay. So if I and if I see if you see I have made it public. Okay. So now let me go and come comment this off. And now let me go and just do a build. Okay. And okay. now if I go and say module one o dot. Now I can see the add fun, add method. You can see, right? Right, right. Now, what what does it mean? What it means is that every language has its own specification. Okay. Uh, so it's either VB dot net. For example, C plus plus has pointers. If you expose a right. pointer out here, right? VB dot net doesn't know what to do because these are type safe languages or pointer safe language. Okay. So what common language specification says is that do the common things which is common in all languages. Don't do something which is not common, or else your component will not be. Uh, it you know it, there is no guarantee that your component can be cross consumed. Okay. okay. In other okay. words, if you create a component in C sharp and if you don't follow common language specification, then must be in VB dot net will not be consumed. Okay. So that's what exactly is common language specification. It is nothing but it is set of guidelines. You know which if you follow right, it will ensure that your component is consumed in all the languages of dot net. Oh, I have that too. Like ideal file interface definition language we used in com. Ah yes, yeah, right. But uh, but uh, here you know it's more specifications. You know, like uh, C plus plus has pointers, but VB dot net has. It. So do not use pointers. First specification. Okay. Second, uh, do not capitalize the same method names with small and big letters. Okay. So third, okay. You know, so there are like fifteen or twenty points. You can go and search on the net. We'll not go in depth into that. But on a, on a base level, common language specification is nothing but set of guidelines which ensures that you know uh, that your language, your your code can be consumed in all the languages. Okay. Okay. And all the .NET languages. Okay. Right. Now.